Hey everybody, Mike here with everythingaboutconcrete.com. In this video, I'm going to show you a complete 28 foot by 20 foot garage slab setup. I'm going to show you all the techniques that we do to get our slabs set up and ready to pour. So what we're doing here is we're getting the forms laid out. The excavation guy, the guy that did the gravel, did a really good job getting the gravel ready and prepped for us. He's got a good level gravel pad here, all compacted. And he dug the haunches down really nice. So it just makes for a good work environment here for us. Makes it go fast. But the first thing we're doing is getting our forms laid out. We're using 2x12s. Uh, before I get into that, if you guys don't know me, if this is your first time watching me, my name's Mike Day. This is my, my YouTube channel, Everything About Concrete, where I talk to you about all the different things we do with concrete. We specialize in slabs and floors and stamp con concrete, uh, concrete repair, staining concrete, decorative concrete. So if you like that kind of stuff, go ahead down there and hit subscribe now. I come out with a couple videos a week, so hit the little bell notification too. So we got the forms all laid out, and now we're getting them screwed together. We use uh, two and a half inch deck screws to screw the forms together. We just like using screws instead of nails. And then once we get the sides, all the sides screwed together, we get them stood up in place. Like I said, this is a 28 by 20 slab. And we always make our sides a little bit longer. So they want to be at least 28 foot one and a half inches by 20 foot one and a half inches or longer. You know, we made these a little bit longer. So we get them stood up and now we're getting the sides measured out and marked. So we'll mark our 28 feet, get that corner screwed. Then I go down and mark 20 feet on that side and we'll get that screwed. Now I'm measuring 28 feet across the back, marking that. And we'll get that corner screwed together. And then we'll measure that last 20 foot side and then get that corner screwed together. And then we'll kind of, you know, we'll kind of eyeball the forms in place with the haunch. In this case, the owner had two metal stakes for the front corners to go by. So we just made sure those two front corners were right where his stakes were. And then once we get all the corners screwed together, then we measure our diagonal to square the slab. So we want to get the exact same measurement from each diagonal. And we'll just keep tweaking each side. We'll move it a little bit one way, a little bit the other until we get the exact same measurement. Then that tells us our slab is square. And as soon as that is done, as soon as the slab is square, we get the four corners pinned in place so nothing's going to move. If we do think it moves, sometimes we'll just double check our measurement corner to corner. But once we get the four corners pinned, then we can run a string along the top of the board. And we usually put the string right in the center. And that will help us pin the middles of the boards and make sure they're nice and straight. So I'm getting the string run around all four sides. And Luke and Darren are putting the pins in right behind me, getting it all straight put in place and then we'll use those pins to set the forms to grade too. I got a whole course on slabs guys down in the description and where I teach you guys every little step that we do I break it down into a bunch of different videos the forming the pouring the power troweling uh, everything you need to know about doing your own slab so if, uh, if you're thinking of doing your own slab, well, uh, that course is definitely the way to go. Um, it's, it's 97 bucks, but it teaches you everything you need to do a concrete slab. Just like this one too, a garage slab. It could be for a house slab. It could be a hot tub slab or a slab for a shed. Um, any type of slab. So what I'm doing now is I'm checking my grades, checking my dirt grades. And then I want to be six inches above the dirt. This is a six inch thick slab. And the edges are obviously going to be 12 inches thick. So once I get my, my average of my dirt grade, which he was, he was within a half an inch on the dirt, then I can set my receiver on the laser, you know, up six inches so I can set the tops of my forms nice and level. 
So me and Luke will go around and I'm checking the tops now just to see how close they are. And once I get that figured out, now we'll screw them right to grade. I'll move it up and down. I, I'm holding the grade stick and I got a little shovel there that I can pry under the form to move it up if I need to. Then Luke's just screwing it right behind me. So we'll get those. Usually we do the four corners and then we'll come back and do the middles. And then I'll just go around and randomly check some areas to make sure everything's all perfect. And that gets the forms all set in place and ready to go. This is like 6 o'clock in the morning here. We got concrete for 7 in the morning. So we had about an hour to get this thing all set up and ready to go before concrete showed up. That'll be part 2 of this video series. There's going to be 3 parts. This is part 1, the setup. Part 2 will be the pour. And then part 3 will be how to power trial this thing. So stay tuned for those 2 parts coming up next. Right now what Darren just did is he put down what those things are called slab bolsters. They keep the wire up off the ground. Because if you don't put something under the wire, it's just going to end up falling to the bottom, which it does really no good down there. So we put those slab bolsters down and then we'll put the wire right on top. And that helps keep the wire up into the concrete when we pour the concrete. The wire's there, you know, if, a, if the slab cracks, we saw expansion joints to help control the cracks, but if it does crack, that wire's there is just to help hold it together. Keep it from moving, separating if it cracks. So that's why we use the wire mesh in there. So we got the wire all in. Now what, what Luke and I are going to do is we're going to go around and we're going to put some braces on those forms because that concrete, even though we got a lot of pins in there, that's still going to want to push those forms out. So we call them kickers. I don't know what you guys call them. What do you guys call those things down in the comments, those braces we're putting on? We just call them kickers. If you guys are getting value out of this, if, if you're liking this video, go ahead and head down there and smash the like button now. That helps, that helps me with the YouTube algorithm, and it helps get this video out to a lot more people. Share it with your friends, too. If you think you might have somebody who's interested in doing a slab, you know, share it with your social media. You can also follow me on social media at, you know, my Facebook group, my Instagram, and my Twitter. Those are all down in the description, too. So as you can see, we're putting those about every four feet or so. And those just will keep the forms from bowing out when we pour. We like having perfect straight edges when we pour. So when the guy goes to build on this thing, it's, this slab is perfectly straight, perfectly square and as perfectly level as we can get it when we pour. We're going to be using a, a 3000 PSI concrete for this thing. And we also put the fiber mesh in the concrete too. So we got two types of reinforcement in the concrete. And then you can see that rebar laying on the ground. We sink in a double roll rebar around the edges as we pour. We kind of wet set them in. And we push them down about two and a half to three inches from the top. So that helps reinforce the edges. So again, if you guys want to learn how to do this, I'll teach you how in that with my course down in the description. Just go ahead down there and click on that. And you, you can check that out. And stay tuned. Then my next two videos coming out will be the pour where I'm going to show and teach you guys how to pour a slab like this and then also how to power trial a slab like this. So for you guys wanting to learn how to power trial, I'm going to teach you all you need to know. Well, that's it, guys. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next video.